Retro Days. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, and many people around the world are preparing for parties, gift exchanges, general merriment, and, of course, enormous feasts. <laughs> Second only to the presents, food is high on most kids' lists as their favorite part of the holidays, and I couldn't agree more. While there are always going to be those traditional homemade foods, drinks, and baked goods that are central to a happy holiday, there too were always a truckload of festive snacks, candy, and junk food that dazzled our young eyes oh so long ago in a yuletide wonderland far away. So strap in while we take a trip on Santa's sleigh back to a time when all those goodies were stuffed into our respective stockings. Drawing a line from the Christmas commercials episode and connecting a couple of dots gets us to our first pick, Christmas Hershey's Kisses, introduced to many of us in the now iconic advertisement. <clears throat> It turns out Christmas Kisses first came out way back in 1923, and even then wouldn't undergo their seasonal wardrobe change until 62, when they appeared in red, green, and silver foil. Although the ad doesn't go that far back, it is Hershey's longest running commercial, having aired every holiday season since 1989. In 2020, the commercial underwent a minor change, adding a short scene to the end of the segment. But after backlash online, the company announced they would air both variants every year. As for the candy itself, what can we say? Despite being the same old chocolate under the colorful wrapper, it remains a classic in candy bowls each December. Representing one of the other major December holidays is Hanukkah Gelt, those gold foil covered coins of chocolate that often appear around houses in December no matter your faith. In the 1600s, Jewish teachers would often refuse payment to teach impoverished children. Around Hanukkah, however, they would accept Gelt, which in Yiddish means money and in Dutch and German means gold. Later, in the 18th and 19th centuries, these coins became a symbolic gesture as European chocolatiers began to fashion the first chocolate gelt. According to Rabbi Deborah R. Prinz, the history of gelt can be traced back to a few other origins as well, including the decision of Hasmoneans to mint their own nation's coins after their military victory over the Greek Syrians. She goes on to explain the gelt of Hanukkah recalls the booty, including coins, that the Maccabean victors distributed to the Jewish widows, soldiers, and orphans, possibly at the first celebration of the rededication of the Jerusalem temple. Now, these delicious chocolate coins can be found in nearly every supermarket and candy store and have become a regular addition to many holiday bounties. At this point, you may have noticed we're stretching the definition of junk food to its absolute limit, and perhaps even venturing beyond the border with this next pick, Christmas breakfast cereal. Breakfast or not, there's enough sugar in the following entries to put them squarely in my junk food category any day. The first limited release of Captain Crunch's Christmas Crunch was in 1987, boasting the Captain wearing a Santa suit, red and green crunch berries, and a free ornament inside the box. In subsequent years, the cereal would undergo slight changes, like the addition of different shaped red and green cereal pieces. Although all the early releases came with different surprises in the box, this eventually faded away. Despite the disappearance of cereal box promotions, the cereal itself is still available every holiday season. The same can't be said, though, for Christmas Cookie Crisp, which had a single release in 1991, followed by a return in 2014. This green and red cereal was described on the box as crunchy little Christmas cookies with frosty sprinkles, according to MrBreakfast.com. And of course, the 1991 release came with an ornament in the box. Going now from a pick that is debatably junk food to one that is the epitome of junk food, we give you Little Debbie's Christmas Trees, which first came out in 1985 and have continued to grace store shelves ever since. Crazy? You'll hear us. Is it Santa? It's Max! Bummer! 
According to Ivy Odom for Southern Living Magazine, these intensely sweet snack cakes were originally shaped like simple triangles with a trunk made of chocolate. By 2012, though, the design became more elaborate with the scalloped edges we've come to know as the essential element of these cakes. Let's take a trip from the popular to the inexplicable with these, what do you call them? Like Christmas hard candies or like ribbon candy or Brock's Gloria mix? I don't know. I just always called them grandma candies because it seemed like anyone over the age of 60 was required by law to own a candy dish filled with these things. And when the holidays rolled around, you better believe your grandparents were coming over with a fruitcake, a can of mixed nuts, and a tin of Christmas hard candy. Despite the old-fashioned feel of these things, I bet you're guilty of picking through the colored assortment of fruity and minty flavors, looking for just the right piece to satisfy your sweet tooth. There were pillowy ones, ribbons, uh, sticks, and cut rock candies with images of green pine trees in the middle. Even if you didn't like to eat them, you couldn't deny it wasn't the holiday season without these candies in a nearby dish. Similarly, there was the official hard candy of Christmas, the candy cane. As quoted by Leslie Kennedy's article for the History Channel, Carly Schildau states, Legend has it that the candy cane dates back to 1670, when the choir master at the Cologne Cathedral in Germany handed out sugar sticks among his young singers to keep them quiet during the living crush ceremony. In honor of the occasion, he bent the candies into shepherd's crooks. Whether you hang them on your tree, dunk them in hot chocolate, or just eat them straight up, candy canes are perhaps the most iconic of Christmas junk foods. In the UK, there are four classic holiday candy tins that fight it out for dominance every year. No matter which you prefer, at least one or more of these appear in most homes during December. Perhaps the fan favorite of the bunch is Quality Street, which was named after J.M. Barry's play. The candy was first made by Macintoshes in 1936, but since 1988 has been manufactured by Nestle. The contents of the tins, now plastic tubs, have evolved and changed over the years. Currently, there are 12 varieties, including the purple one, so named due to its purple wrapper, which is milk chocolate filled with hazelnut and caramel. Among esoteric names, there's also the green triangle, which is milk chocolate filled with hazelnut praline. Other varieties include Toffee Finger, Strawberry Delight, and Caramel Swirl, among others, each adorned in festive colored foil. One can see why there are so many fans. The middle two of these yearly mixes are Heroes and Celebrations, both of which are basically mini versions of larger chocolate bars. Celebrations being Mars's offering, which first appeared in 1997, and Heroes being Cadbury's response in 1999. Celebrations in particular would likely read more as Halloween than Christmas to consumers stateside, with candy like Mars, Milky Way, Twix, and Snickers. Heroes includes Cadbury candy like Dairy Milk, Wispa, Twirl, and Cream Egg. Finally, there's Roses, which thematically is more akin to Quality Street and released by Cadbury in 1938 as a competitor. The candy varieties in this tub differ from region to region, but in the UK and Ireland include Caramel Toffee, Country Fudge, Hazel in Caramel, Strawberry Dream, and more. Roses often comes in last place among the four, though far be it from this American to declare any one of these as an objective winner in such a subjective category as favorite UK Christmas candy. In America, another tin would often make a yearly appearance in December, this one filled with cookies. Royal Dansk is the Danish brand of butter cookies that come in a now iconic blue tin can. Determining Royal Dansk's connection to the holiday season is a little harder than our other picks today. For many, it just happened to be something their parents or grandparents would purchase in December, then leave out on a festive holiday table along with mixed nuts, chocolate-covered cherries, and the advent calendar. Whatever the reason, the delicious variety of cookies are as important as the tin itself, which would no doubt become your mother's new sewing box or a place for your father's marble collection, then shoved into the back of the top shelf of their bedroom closet for you to discover decades later. Yet another iconic Christmas treat is the Lifesavers Sweet Storybook, which dates all the way back to 1935 and has been sold every Christmas since. This cardboard book used to contain 10 to 12 rolls of Lifesavers, though current iterations contain only six. Inside, you'll also find a short Christmas story to go along with your candy. 
These classics have endured generations, becoming traditions in their own right, passed down from parents to their children and over again. When it comes to the holidays, everyone is going to have their own favorite foods, drinks, and traditions, many of which diverge from our usual focus on pop culture and commercial items. For instance, no matter how many times I try to explain to the resident writer that all of those admittedly delicious homemade treats he keeps trying to write into this script don't really fit the theme, he just won't listen. Even though he's an intelligent, charismatic, and dying to- ah! Get out of my head! Stick to the topic, writer! <clears throat> he just won't relent until I acknowledge a few of his personal favorite Italian-American delicacies like Tirone, Panettone, and Strufoli. While these traditional foods don't often appear in nostalgic commercials, they are a huge part of many Christmas celebrations going back hundreds of years. Just like our writer, we know you have your own holiday traditions and favorite festive treats, so, of course, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. To break with our usual script, and on a personal note, we want to thank you for making this a truly wonderful year. Our channel has grown exponentially in the last few months, and it has been a true delight to read your comments, talk on the community tab, and invite you back week after week. We hope you'll return for more videos that invoke a deep sense of wonder and nostalgia as we continue to celebrate yesteryear together. We wish you a safe and nostalgic Christmas from all of us here at Retro Days. Happy Holidays. Clanky, clanky.